Hey everyone. Uh, this episode, we are going to dive into something which I'm beginning to get more and more passionate about, and that is uh, this work in the space of building trauma-informed workplaces, um, and how as a culture, as a society, we get better with working through some of those things that um, that are, are really activating for us as human beings. Um, you all know that I have a huge passion for building workplaces around purpose, um, places where we can be decent human beings, um, workplaces where we can allow the uniqueness of ourselves and our teams to really thrive. And so for me, the trauma-informed workplaces uh, training that I'm currently doing, uh, all of the this field has become very, very fascinating to me in terms of creating those safer and braver spaces and starting to really unlock the potential of our teams. So what I wanted to do today is share something that if you're here for the business transformation hardcore stuff, this could be a little outside your comfort zone. So full warning. Um, I'm hoping that it's a nice, easy exercise and it gives you some insight. However, if at any time it throws you completely off, then by all means, you are welcome to leave. You're welcome to turn the recording off. You're welcome to no longer continue with the activity. So having planted that seed of doubt in your minds, um, what I'm sharing with you today is uh, one of the first exercises that I did around learning a concept that I find really, really interesting in its application to business. So we're working with Peter Levine. He has an amazing book called Waking the Tiger. Uh, and in it, he talks about this concept of felt sense. And the way that he describes it, my interpretation of the way that he describes it, is uh, the sense of understanding and knowing that is more than the sum of the rational details or the parts. And what is that greater experience? Uh, I find in business I often struggle with this ability to talk about context um, greater than the, the sum of the parts. And one of the examples that struck me here was um, he talks about the sensation of standing at the seaside and experiencing what it is to stand on a beach in, in front of the ocean. Now we might be able to use language to describe that. If I was to describe the scent of the ocean, the sound of the waves crashing on the beach, the feeling of the sand beneath your toes, you know, maybe the color schemes in terms of the blues and greens that you're seeing, it's a cloudy day, the clouds are coming in. I can use all of these words to describe that experience of standing on the beach. But if you're actually there, there's a whole bunch more going on that we can't even begin to put into words. And so that's kind of the core of this idea of felt sense. And I wanted to read through, there's an exercise in this book that I wanted to share with you because it starts to get you into, I guess, a bodily understanding, a bit deeper understanding of what it is that we're talking about here. So I'm going to share this mini meditation with you. Please uh, feel free to do this exercise in your own time. And then we're going to talk about how we apply this to business more broadly, right? So uh, for those of you that have got the book, I'm on page 68 and this exercise is designed, um, a, a read from the book. It's, it, I'll do this as a reading, that way um, I'm not putting words in, um, in this wonderful human's mouth. So, the following is an exercise that will begin to give you a basic experiential understanding of the felt sense. Wherever you are as you read this, make yourself as comfortable as possible. So take a moment. Feel the way that your body makes contact with the surface that is supporting you. Sense into your skin and notice the way that your clothes feel. Sense underneath your skin. What sensations are there? Now, gently remembering these sensations, how do you know that you feel comfortable? What physical sensations contribute to the overall feeling of comfort? Does becoming more aware of these sensations make you feel more or less comfortable? Does this change over time? 
sit for a moment and enjoy the felt sense of feeling comfortable. I'm going to read it one more time. Feel the way that your body makes contact with the surface that is supporting you. Sense into your skin and notice the way that your clothes feel. Sense underneath your skin. What sensations are there? Now, gently remembering these sensations, how do you know that you feel comfortable? What physical sensations contribute to the overall feeling of comfort? Does becoming more aware of these sensations make you feel more or less comfortable? Does this change over time? Sit for a moment and enjoy the felt sense of feeling comfortable. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and I wanted to talk about how we start to take this concept of felt sense into business. So this all makes a whole bunch of sense if you're talking about mindful movement or those types of things, right? That we talked at the beginning of this month around uh, aligning ourselves from the inside out. What it means to do the work, the self-reflection, the self-work, to get lined up so that we can show up externally as the leaders that we aspire to be. So how does this felt sense stuff start to make sense in the business context? Well, I've been reflecting on this and I think one of the things I've always struggled with is this idea of how do we how do we uh, take the the context of business around us and and take account of that. Sorry, I have a cat that is attacking the table beneath me, which is incredibly helpful. Um, how do we take that con that context and feed that into our decision making, right? We have a language of business which is super low context. We have profit and loss sheets, we have balance sheets, we have those tools for very good reason, for comparing apples with apples in a global context. There are very, very good reasons for having those tools. And part of what we're seeing with the movement around agile, around new ways of working, um, you know, one, one of the stories I love was this, I had this conversation with a friend about the use of post-it notes in meetings and when we're workshopping things, right? And I, I feel like we've got to this place where post-it notes on a wall are almost an acknowledgement that business problems can no longer be defined in two-dimensional pictures on a page. Like we actually have to move into a three-dimensional um world to be able to try and give the context and the relevance and all the richness that comes with the thing that we're looking at or trying to make a decision about. And so I've struggled with that. I've struggled to put it into words. I've struggled with these concepts of gut feel. I certainly have a very strong sense of intuition and gut feel and I do listen to what's going on internally when I'm making decisions. And yet there's this tension for evidence-based and data-driven and that uber rational, low context, um, that 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 rational kind of space around we want to be making decisions that are repeatable, um, that are made in the context of the data, and so there's this tension, right? For me, there's this tension around. I believe what we're trying to do is to build adequate context for our decision making, whether that be with data, whether that be with the way that we represent information. And I believe that there's a bunch of stuff going on that maybe we can't quite put on paper. It's a bit like when you issue a tender and you ask for a whole set of requirements and yet the thing that you can't put into words on paper and you can't experience when you're making that decision is, is this team going to work together well? Are your people going to gel with my people? Is that 
is that working relationship going to be okay? We can't know that through documentation, um, through that tender process. There's a whole bunch of ways we can try and build that in, but it's kind of like the stuff that's not on paper. Like, how do we take account for it? And so what I'm experimenting with at the moment is this idea of felt sense. And this idea of, yes, be absolutely clear on all of those rational details, all of those pieces that we can list, the data, the evidence, where we're getting that evidence from, be absolutely visible and clear on that. And can we hold a little bit of space for something else that we inherently know, that our bodies know, that we, what are those, those details that we're picking up on or that subconscious piece that is also equally part of our decision making. We know that 70 to 80% of decision making is based on environment and context at the time of the decision. So there's a bunch of stuff going into our decisions that is influencing us that we are potentially unable to account for. And I am really, really curious uh, as to your thoughts around how you're incorporating that in. I'm not saying go and make decisions based on gut feel and that that's good business. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that there is a part of that that I think in our quest for rational details and data-driven and evidence decision, we are losing account of a little bit of our humanness that's required and valuable in that decision-making. And so I'm really interested to... First, to share Peter Levine's work with you around felt sense, but also to hear whether or not this resonates with you, how it resonates with you, how you incorporate that sense of knowing into the decisions that you're making. So that's it from me for this episode. Uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. And we're going to be back again soon with another tool for you to use. So go out there and smash it.